Hi, Marie. Hi, Vicki. <laughs> we are in the Handy Quilter Studio. This is where we work. This is where we play. Play. Some people think we play. But we have holiday. We have, and to me, holiday means October 1st till maybe Valentine's, but ah, at least you're going to leave out September, fall. I don't know. That's true. <laughs> so we have fun, fun decorations gift ideas, party favor ideas. We have just pulled everything together and what we're going to do today is show you some ideas but I'll show, also show you some techniques of why we would do this or how we would do that. So come on, you're in for a good ride today. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Let's start with a party favor. Okay, look how cute these are. So Halloween. Okay, so they were done on the long arm. They were done with the pro stitcher. So you stitch the first go around that okay, gives you so where to put it. The then you put your, don't put your candy in yet, put your plastic on top. And that plastic is just plastic that I purchased at Walmart. You know, just a, there's heavy, really heavy grade plastic. There's a light grade. I kind of went with a medium grade plastic in the fabric department of Walmart, and I think you could find it in other places. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Lay that on top and then stitch it out again. And then there's just a little, little tiny... There's a slit right there that you just slide the candy down into it, and you have a little party favor. And so that's this is Christmas. We're showing you the Halloween. It, you have your face, and that is your first stitch out. Then you put your plastic on it and stitch it again, which would be this side. Stitch just with the outside, slit it. And this one I say slit his throat and put the candy down. Yeah, so Easter it's, survived. Yeah, you can do any <laughs> holiday, any uh, for a birthday even. These same things. These designs right here, this is a design from Karen Farnsworth. And so we, you know, I just purchased that and stitched that out. But I actually went into my art and stitch and just create, took a Christmas tree and used that and it worked the same way. So it was really fun. Cute, cute. Okay, and okay. you're not limited to the pro stitcher. You could use oh. just your regular free motion quilting, create a shape, put your plastic down and do it again. Oh yeah, I could do a pumpkin. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. so then fall. And I am so glad that you said what you did earlier today because I said, oh, this is Halloween. and. Marie said, no, this is not Halloween, this is fall. Candy corns can go all the way into Thanksgiving. I'm going, oh, I can't go buy some more candy corns. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I chose these colors, is they're kind of more fallish mm -hmm. than your trick-or-treatish kind of colors. So first of all, I pieced the Small, little runner. Yeah, it's just, and it's narrow, so it fits on a nice yeah, table. Yeah, so, and then I took my fabrics and I just stitched those together. So three three colors, or three. Yep. well, you have some others, but yeah. you just make your strips. I just used scraps, so these worked. And then I made just cut out a little candy corn shape. It in half, did my shape. So then I cut it out, made my little candy corns. So you've got a raw edge applique going on here. I've got a raw edge, and I'm great with raw edge. And I just glue them a little couple of little spots, so, so they this, can this. Uh, glue stick I found we found at just the dollar store so a dollar I think you get three of them for a dollar and it's a wash away and it doesn't and it even when you use the iron it acts as a starch and actually kind of glues it down sticks it and so they're great and it's got what we a really fine point so you can so see it worked that. great so really I could just good. do little tiny drops anyway Okay, so first I use this gold thread. It's a trilobal polyester. Magnifico. From Superior. Okay, and so I use my Pro Stitcher and I use the grid play. So this isn't cross hatch, this is a grid. So in the Pro Stitcher, the new designs, and there are different grids that you can choose. Uh -huh. I think this is awesome. Usually we think of the cross hatch, but I love the grid. Yeah, it turned out really cute. So I changed thread for the candy corn. So this is my so fine, 
And you can see I already have the little candy corn is glued down. Now I'm gonna start over here at this one because I'm going to just lead in. Oh, so you never did break your thread. You just started on your first one, squigglied around, and then looped and, and did a trail. Like yep. they're all connected. Like they're Good all connected. Good idea. Good tip. So, so you don't have to break your thread. And now how, what what type of design are you? So I'm you, just gonna swirl around. I'm just gonna Okay, let's watch you swirl. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna lead into it. So, I bet you if you put the glide foot on, that I would love to have that glide foot on. Right? And then it would not lip over your fabric at all. Okay, so right here I would get out my ruler and come across, then I could come up to this one and then just keep going. Oh, and then just follow into this one. Yep. Wow, what a fun idea. Okay, first tip. So, background fill. I love to fill, and we're, you're gonna see that today. A lot of things that we've done is uh, used a background fill to, what I call plaster down the back, and Pla then add some yeah, element to yeah, the front. Yeah, it add, just adds to Okay, it. so okay. you wanna t take those? All right. All right, the next thing, we'll actually move this machine aside, and we're gonna talk about Halloween. So I have this really fun cheater oh. panel. I call it a cheater panel, <laughs> but it's a pre-printed fabric. And I purchased four of this print. And then I purchased another print for the backing. Then I took the backing print and I placed it, pinned it onto my frame, okay? Just square yep. onto the okay. frame. Then I took the, the, these four uh, pre-printed fabrics layered them together, made sure that they matched up, you know, corners. And then what I did with that is I put it on at an angle. That's the trick. That is the trick, because <laughs> we tried it the other way. I like this. Because our machines have channel lock, whether you have the channel lock with a pro stitcher, whether you have the electromagnetic channel lock, or whether you just use your little channel lock. your plastic channel lock yeah. and put it on the wheels, it has that channel lock, so you can do a horizontal channel lock all the way down this. So I just stitched every half inch on all of the layers. And I had those straight lines. Yeah. yeah. And then when I took it off, it had that stability of the backing fabric. And I took a rotary cutter that has a guide uh, or a for, it's made just for this. For chenille. Yeah. It's a yeah. chenille rotary cutter. And I slid it between four, those four um, pre-printed fabrics and slice that on every one of those, leaving the backing. Now there was one time that I forgot <laughs> to put it between it. I goofed. <laughs> but that's a lesson. That. <laughs> that's a lesson that I learned. And then you can frame this, or frame it, bind it. The one thing that after you get this done, then you throw it in your washer and you throw it in your dryer a couple of times in the washer and dryer and it just chenilles that. Yeah. And, but you, the nice thing about it is with the four layers, let's hold this up for the camera, with the four layers, you still get the picture, yeah. even though you yeah. slice oh, those. Yeah, and it's just it's soft. It's just really it's soft. Such it a great is. Texture. It is, there's no yeah. batting in it. It's just really soft. Yeah, love that one. Okay, so we talked about background, okay, and putting a background feel. I wanna show you, I'm gonna hold this up, and I'm gonna have to, I'm going to hold this up and see this. I hate to hide your face, Marie, there. But this is just a fun uh, pattern, and it's from Quilting Connections from Pat Losey. And uh, I wanted the background to have a lot of quilting. I wanted the, this to just stand on its own with a little bit of outline quilting on it. So I really quilted the background tight. This is what we call like a Karen McTavish, a McTavishing. And in this one, I just did little wiggles on this all the way across, and it gives it a really fun look. So if I, we pull this around for our other camera to see and hold that up, you oh, can see. see as he comes in really close here, you can see that texture and how fun is that and how easy it is to, to just do a free motion quilting and it doesn't matter if it's 
if the little wiggles are the same on each one, as long as they're wiggles, you know, and the same thing here. So just background fill. And we're going to talk a lot about background fill today because it's really fun to do and it really helps the quilt out. Now, <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to point out all your mistakes, aren't you? No, that wasn't a mistake. That was no, good. No, here it comes. So on this quilt, I did a border design and I wasn't really careful, as careful as I should have been, about making sure the border was within, that was didn't get in yeah. closed in the binding. And so it did. As I put the binding on, you can see it took off part of my design. But because I did it all the way around and then put my binding on, it looks like that's the way it was supposed to be. So sometimes we can do things that are mistakes and cheat about it. And just say that's what and I meant. That's, that was what I meant to do. <laughs> so just, you know, that's a tip. If you don't want that to be in your binding area, make it a little smaller. All right, what's the next? Okay, moving fall. on. Fall. Are we into We're fall? We're still into fall. I love these little teeny Table runners. These runners. just they're work up so fast. So this is one that I used a lot of different threads. Let's see what do we got here. So I love to use two threads. I started out with just this one and it didn't show very much. So I added, so I had the two threads. So I've got this one and this one and, and that one. Close to the colors. And this one I found like it kept catching. So I just put this one on the horizontal, horizontal spool, spool pin. pin and this one on the back. Then I take each one through a different thread loop at the, on the thread mast and just take them both together. So you and put this them. on the horizontal spool pin and then took it to the back. So normally we don't do that, but that helped with this metallic that helped with to this untangle. One. Some, yeah. Because it, it's a metallic, they're a little finicky. Yeah. But that's a good tip. Yeah. Sometimes really you tip. just have to work with your thread to figure out what makes it work. Yeah. And that one worked really cute. Look how cute these are. Okay. So this leaf right here really shows it off. Really shows it off. You get the glitter. Mm -hmm. And then you still get the heaviness of the other thread. And you left this, this is totally raw edge. You just used the, stitch the vines. So I'm not really planning on washing this. So it kind of looks like the leaves are just laying on top of there because I left it like that. And you did so a background first. I did like a background. Like we talked about, yep. fill that in, which is a fun texture. And then, so on this background, did you kind of use the leaves as a guide? I did. These little just, leaves in the print of the fabric. Yep, just did kind of a wiggle, kind of crosshatch. And then used your, you know, your uh, I just trailing wiggled, stitch. Yep, trailing through. Okay, so there's another element on this quilt that's really uh -huh. fun. So this is the cr couching foot that I used, just plain black yarn. So Okay, so we used the couching foot. And I went around the outside and I, I just left a little bit of yarn when I started and finished and just tied, tied it, it in a bow. So instead of doing a, a piping for this little fall runner, instead of you know doing the yeah. black fabric piping, couching that gives you that same effect. Oh my gosh, how I easy love is it, that? Huh? Probably this was some stray yarn you had at your house. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Couching feet. Oh my gosh, that was cool. All right, now this is a table runner, a fall table runner, and it is reversible. So you can see this side, it's kind of a little gingham or check, and then the back side or the front, whichever, is just a nice fall print. Oh, I love it. I know, isn't this fun? So in your Pro Stitcher, there are a couple of different designs that are placemats. Now this is a table runner, and this is our friend Hattie Brown, that used to be an employee here, uh, an educator, mm -hmm. she totally digitized this and quilted it out and gave it to me as a gift. So I think this is awesome. But look how fun to use the crosshatch, you know, and if you don't have a pro stitcher, this is something that you can do yeah. with yeah. your rulers and your arc rulers here and get this very effect. Cross hatching, a couple of uh, rows of straight line quilting, and then a couple of three rows of art quilting. And you've there got you a go. great gift. So this is fall, but it could have been a Christmas. Oh, it yeah. could be a snowman, you oh, know, yeah. snow, any, any holiday or any occasion. All right. Now, one of the things, and we talked about cheater panels or pre-printed fabrics. Um, I love 
how this quilt has beautiful fall fabrics and you could have pieced it all but what she did is she found and this is Nancy from our uh, marketing department that made this but she took just pre-printed fabrics cut them apart and and they are those blocks so saving time for doing applique just place that block in there it looks like it's been applique she edge to edge quilted it and it's beautiful a nice yeah. fall quilt to hang over your banister or cuddle up in there you go so and the same thing fall any holiday any holiday have they have oh, pre-printed yeah. fabrics yeah. you can make any quilt out there just find the pre-prints or or fussy cut some fabrics and that's where you're going to put in there to give that that punch of the of the holiday or whatever you're doing okay now our last one that we want to show in this season or yeah fall. fall is a pillow now this pillow is just two and a half inch strips of fabric folded in half and then just stitch down using the channel lock. Yeah, just your did it right on the, the channel arm. lock. And so this is just a nice fall pillow. Okay, now let's take you over to Carrie because she thought, oh, I like fall, I like Christmas better. And so she has done this, and we're going to show you how it's done on our Avante with Carrie. So, Carrie, this is such a fun pillow, but you've taken it to Christmas. I have. I decided that it was just so cute and fun to play with that I wanted to have a Christmas pillow too. For the grandkids, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, well, so how do you make this? Well, you just take two and a half inch strips. Jelly rolls. Jelly rolls would be perfect. Or cut your own. Yep. And you just fold it in half, so you have your... Okay. So, two and a half inch strips, fold it in half. Mm -hmm. All right, and then... What I did was I made a plumb line to make sure I had my pillow, my strips on straight. So using either the Pro Stitcher or the Electromagnetic Channel Lock or, or the your Channel Locks. For your wheels, wheels. Mm -hmm. yes. You just make sure you have a straight line to, to measure with. with. And then you use the Channel Locks and just go down, go down the way. Stitch it down. And your hopping foot is the perfect guide to get a quarter inch, right? Absolutely, yes. So as you're stitching along here, you're just going to stitch with a channel lock along and then add another row. And one thing I know that you talked about when you started this is you took your fold and you had it down here and then you realized you couldn't yes. do that because you were working Exactly. Opposite. With this that pillow I had to kind of, I learned from there because I put the, the fold on this way instead of that way. Okay, so you started your first at the top uh -huh. and then you worked your way down, down. In, on each. And how fun, these prints are adorable. Yes. There, cute, it was cute. a lot of fun. Okay, all right, let's move on to another similar to this. And Carrie's got another idea, so yes. we're gonna move over to another machine. Okay, so now we have another idea. This is an idea that I know we've showed before, but it's fun for gifts or for Christmas stockings or for any, anything. Uh, anything, pillows. So a few years ago in, uh, all people quilt allpeoplequilt.com and also in a magazine of theirs quilting and more they came out with this cute carrot that you just add strips of fabric to and flip stitch and flip stitch and flip on the domestic machine okay i thought wait i have channel locks i, I can quilt this. this and i can stitch it all out yes. on my long arm uh -huh. and so I showed my daughter-in-laws and my daughters how to do this and my daughter just got so ambitious and decided to make Christmas stockings for all of the family. So she did all these cute, cute prints of fabric, yeah. added the little cuff to them and got very energetic. She made seven of them. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> There's only six in the family. <laughs> I think she's hoping for someone else. <laughs> so all of these fun stockings with this same technique that she was able to do. And if she wanted to make seven, she could just make a long strip and cut out a whole bunch. And she may have done that. That would have she been the thing to do. probably did that. That's what I would what have done if idea. I'm going to make that many. That is really a good yeah, idea. Just you make know? 
Okay. A long strip. That's right. And so we're going to move those aside. You have been doing that. I have. you got plenty of fabric to do something big. Right. A big stocking <coughs> or whatever shape whatever. you want. Yes. So tell me what size these are strips of fabric. These are just one and a half strips, but again, you can use whatever you want. So it could be a random one and a half to, to whatever yeah, to make it, you know, met as many different fabrics as you want and uh, go from there. And then so you need a channel lock, mm -hmm. whether you use the channel lock, uh, your, your plastic channel locks mm -hmm. on both wheels, or whether you use the Pro Stitcher or the electromagnetic right. channel locks, doesn't matter. And one thing that you have added to this on the long arm, and I was a little afraid of what you were doing, it works and it's really <laughs> awesome. So here's this cute little iron. You can find it at your fabric store. I don't even know the brand of it, but it's just this cute little iron. Mm -hmm. Or there's this iron as well, and this is from Clover. So it's just a little wand iron. Mm -hmm. And when you do your stitch and flip, Yep, when you're going along like this, I have the ruler base on. And so it's fun to just have this little iron here. And when you're, when you're putting it down, you just want to just press. go along and press as you go. You're, are you pressing and stitching at the same time? No. Oh, okay. I'm just, my ruler base moves with me oh, so I can, that's right. I can iron. You do need that ruler. Yeah, so I'm wrong. Yeah. So my concern and my thought was, would this hurt the ruler would base. this melt your ruler base but because you have quilt batting and fabric and it's not that hot of an iron no. it didn't bother you're not going to sit there and just hold it no it did it gave it that good crisp seam uh-huh and then you were, and, and they then kept were, it probably kept it really accurate didn't right it, it really it really <coughs> see, uh, pressed it down so that my strips were straight okay so the other thing is we do have the glide foot and i think wow that'd be great but you used your ruler foot. I used the hopping foot. The, the ruler hopping foot. Right. And that gave you that quarter inch marking, so right along the edge. So and then I knew. you yes. just kept that. Yes. So I just went along, did a quarter inch seam right there. Okay, so you've got this all done. You're ready to put a white one on. So can you do one for us? Sure. And I think you've got it. Let's Ready see. to go. Have you got that lined up? I Pretty do. Close lined up there. So go ahead and place one on. Okay. I'll take the iron aside. It's not hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not plugged in right now. <laughs> or I so. wouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to go ahead and using that right yeah. along the edge, and you're going to stitch this. that down. How about if I get rid of all that this stuff for you? That would be good for you. This is a little high. For what for I would you, do. <laughs> but it's perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> and we will go ahead, and I've got my channel locks on, so I just want to go ahead, go ahead. And, and start. Uh huh. Holding that down, and that the ruler base helps there also. Oh, really it just important. Helps your yeah, so it's fun to have the ruler base. So there. some good tips here on using your ruler base. You don't need it just for rulers. <laughs> it can be used for Okay, so now if we move that aside, bring it back over here. Okay. Clip your threads and let's again that flip stitch and flip. So now you're going to go ahead and flip that. And, and then, take my little iron, but you oh, want yes, the ruler you base. Oh, yes, you have to have the ruler base, uh -huh. either whether it's this iron or, the, or other one, just, the other one, which I think you found you like this I like the this best. one best because I can just go along like this oh. and just hurry and iron it, and then you've got your, your very crisp, crisp seam. Yes. Accurate. Yes. Oh, wow, that's great. Okay, let's move on to the next. I think we have something with Cheryl for a Christmas project that could be a gift or a decoration. Yep. So let's move on. Okay. Now we're with Cheryl Hi. and another project. Fun, fun, wall hanging. It could even be a table runner type thing. It could. Or a just gift. a little decoration. It is. So you've just taken this and put a border around it. I did. I just put a border around it and then I cut some strips of different fabrics Cute Christmas and made fabrics. a Christmas tree. 
All I did was I used my glue stick and I glued them down. But wait, 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 there's something you did before that. I did. I stitched a background design on first using a pro, using my pro stitcher. Okay, your pro stitcher, or you could have just done free motion quilting. I could you know, have. and just added fun swirls. This is a design from Wasatch Quilting. It is. It is really fun swirl it's, design. I think it's called ribbons. Ribbons. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, it's adorable for this. Looks like the snow is swirling in it the background, does. doesn't it? But a fun Christmas tree. So you cut the strips. I cut the strips and then I just laid them out the way I wanted them and glued them down with my glue stick. And then I used the channel lock on my pro stitcher and just zipped around the edges of okay. each of my strips. So your pro stitcher or you could have used the electromagnetic channel locks or you could have used the, the plastic channel locks on your wheels. Or I could have used rulers. You could have. With rulers you'd have to have marked it this to get it accurate where the others you could you know you have that horizontal but you know the rulers that's a good idea it's yes. not so formal I mm -hmm. think you could have just kind of adjusted the ruler as you went along you too. could have made it a little wonky yeah you know had those trees just at different angles too you could and then put a put a fun trunk or a, a pot there with that that's great and yeah. then bind it uh, that's that's wonderful you've glued a star to the top yes, of it yes we did you've you got to have a star on the top of your tree you could and add some jewels if you want for lights you know yeah. sky's the limit great idea it would be fun okay i know you have another project for oh, that snow oh i do okay so let's move on to the next project okay Okay, Cheryl, Kay. now we've moved on to a little bit of snow because in Utah, we get snow. We do. My you daughter know? got it yesterday up in Wyoming. Oh, see? Yeah. There. So we get snow where some places never see snow. So we want to show what snow looks like. But again, Marie did some table runners, these little tiny, just a strip of fabric, <laughs> you know, add some border around it. And then again, you have put a background fabric or a background design on it. And this design is? It's called Curly Cues and Snowflakes, I think, from Wasatch Quilting. Okay, cute, because it's got snowflakes in here and curly cues. It is. All yep. right, and then this is such a cool idea. That is quilt batting. It is. And it's got my Wonder Under or Heat and Bond heat and or bond whatever stabilizer. Or whatever. Okay, so on the back, and so we'd take this off, and it leaves that glue or adhesive on the, that side, and then place those anywhere on your quilt. So this could be done with snowman, the quilt batting, Good. or uh, how fun, what a cute idea. It is. And I see it's really glittery, and I love that, because it's that snow glittering, because the sun is shining on it. Yep. So what have you used? I've actually used the glitter thread by Superior Threads. And this is 111, which is just kind of a iridescent color. So it and just adds that sparkle to it. Okay, so give us the tip of the day that you do on how to, because you're gonna, you stitched these snowflakes with just a straight line. You didn't go around the edge. I didn't. She did iron them down, but she just, look what she did here just with a ruler. And tell me the tip that you use when using rulers. Well, I have the older style of carriage on my pro stitcher. Which means? I have levers that drop down on the side. And when I'm doing rulers, I like to have one of my levers down. And it doesn't matter which one. It just slows the machine down just a little so bit. So it adds a little resistance. It doesn't it does. lock it. Nope, it doesn't. It just adds resistance. Mm -hmm. And then you don't feel like it's going to shift on you. Yep. Oh, that's a good idea. So I use it all the time. No. The other thing that we need to mention is that with the glitter thread, you need to make sure that you put it onto your horizontal spool pin. Okay, so it winds, it rolls off rather than pulls off up the top. Right, otherwise it twists as it comes up. And this and is a very delicate thread, but it's fun. So you have to use a lot less tension on that's it. That's right, so, so probably turn it maybe two or three turns yes. to loosen up that tension so that you can stitch these fun straight lines. And you did this all with that. I did. With the glitter thread. Yep. Cool. And it works so great on our machine. Show machines. us how you're doing that. Oh, you know what? I see something else. I knew another tip. Oh, okay. You're using the ruler base because I you're am. using a ruler. I am. Which is really important. You always want to use your ruler base. And because you're so close to the edge here, you have actually added some extenders. Because I have. if you would have clipped your um, 
clamp. clamps to this, it would have hit the ruler base. It would. So you've added extenders. And so let's see how far you can totally quilt that. I can totally come over to the edge of it and quilt see, that without it See, here's my ruler base and it hitting. won't bump against that. And it'll do just fine. Okay, so let's see how you <laughs> are going to stitch this. Okay, I like to find the center of my snowflake and I just drop my needle down and bring up my bobbin thread. And then I put it back down and I put my ruler on. Make sure your writing is up on your ruler so that if you want to use the markings, you can. And then I simply go up one side, back down in the same spot, and all the way across to the other side. So you could have gone up into this if you'd wanted, yep. but it's your choice. And usually when I'm doing rulers, I like to have my needle stop in the down position. So then, I'm going to move over to this. So you rotate your ruler. This little arm of the snowflake. And I'm going to go up. And it helps if you stay on the ruler. And just stitch it. OK, how fun is that? Quick and you'll just and stitch simple. them all out. Yep. And it's done. Bind it, and you've got another table runner. Or you could even hang it up on your front door or you something. Could. Or give it as a gift. Yep. And guess what? The good thing about this, in Utah, we can keep it on our tables till March. That's true. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> All right. Well, I think Marie has something now for trees. So let's move over to another machine and let's see what Marie's got for us. Okay. Marie. This is so cute. Isn't this cute? So, oh, this, is, so cute. this doesn't have to necessarily be Christmas, but fall. It could be a any. cabin. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. See? And a great gift for someone. Right. Okay. Right. Show us what so, you've done. These are all just the corner. See how I just cut that off? Like if you had a fat quarter, fat quarter and you cut each and of the I four just corners. Went like that on one side. And then I just laid them out, stacked them out here how I liked them. Had a tall one in the center. And then lots of different browns, but look at this little Christmas tree trunk. Can you see those little tiny? Yes, and this is the fabric. How fun. Fussy cut those just little. Just fussy cut some of Gee, them. I thought so you pieced that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this life. Okay, so I just put these on. I put green thread in, and I just used my ruler and went across the top. Oh! And then when I got over to the center, I came back, and then on the other side. And you can kind of see I left my brown thread here. Okay, so, so I just would sew this one, kind of tie off, sew this okay. one. Jumped kind over. Jumped over, yep. And then I'll click, clip my threads at the end. So you put your trees on and then you put your trunks in afterwards. Right, so I just double stitched. you could have done either way, yeah. whatever. Well, so it's a raw edge applique and you didn't use any glue. You no, just laid it down. Just laid it down, yep. Okay, and you didn't do any quilting in the background. Are you going to go back and quilt? So the difference is, is there's a lot of space here and I can go back in and do some quilting in the trees. And that'll make the quilting in the trees puff up. If you do the quilting in the background, then put your fabric on, you don't get that same loft behind it. So you'll do your quilting in the background after the trees right, are on. Right, right. Okay, so what it's a, good a, idea. a different look. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can even put my binding on with my sewing machine. What a cute binding. I so love that. I can just take this and with I'll. I'll machine. The one thing you want to check though is like I have seams because this was just a fat quarter. You want to make sure they don't meet in your corner. So kind of. So lay you'll it out. do the same thing as you come along here and then fold that just like you would. Just like you do your binding. So I okay. like to have my ruler base on. I lay this on here. I use my ruler foot to just kind of. For that quarter inch. Quarter inch. And if I'm not sure myself, I can use the ruler to keep it nice and straight across there and and stitch it up because this is within your throat space you can put this whole binding on and you are ready to sit down and watch a movie and bind it yes 
Oh. <laughs> Get it so on. Fun. I have a movie for us. <laughs> oh. I have a Christmas movie. All right. <laughs> oh, it's a wonderful life. That's right. <laughs> Again. Again. Okay. <laughs> so let's show you some other things. We've got lots and lots of just ideas of fun Christmas ideas. So hang on. We've got more for you. All right, Marie. We have a pile of fun, fun things to show. We kind of gathered what we had and made while we've been working here. So do you want to start it? No, let me. I think this oh, is so it's adorable. So fun. This is adorable. This is just plain red fabric. This is a design from Wasatch Quilting. Can you tell we like those designs? And it's an edge-to-edge -edge design, but I just used one repeat of it. I used this yarn and couched it. Now this yarn is, I, we bought this from Australia. Australia. And it comes in all different colors. Excel, and you can just buy it, go online and purchase all different colors. So I've got all these different colors here. Yeah, Helen okay. Godden put us onto this, so. Yes, yes. And just couched it with the couching foot, with the Pro Stitcher. So I just let the Pro Stitcher do the quilting, then what I did was I took the glide foot and attached the rickrack on the frame with my quilting machine, glued some cute buttons here, and made a pillow out of that. Now you have just a little bit of batting underneath that, right? One layer? One layer on this side, and then on the other side I just made the envelope. The cover. The cover, so how cute is that? Just Look. adorable. I'm, I was All right, I can match fun. that. Oh, how cute. oh, look how cute. So this Do you call that a candle rug? A candle or mat. A candle mat. And it just has felt, black felt inside. So you don't even have to So bind that's it. raw edge. Yeah. And yeah. just cut around it and, and there just you cut go. Cut around to go. it. And look how cute. So that's like a Christmas tree skirt design miniaturized. Yeah. Which would also be really cute, cute. to do that large. Oh. Okay. Very cute. Looks like you got some more glitty. Gl okay, more glitz. Yes, this is. You can quilt on all kinds of different fabrics, and use more threads, and you can use more than one thread, or stitch it more than once. Let's pull this one out just okay. to show the difference. All right. This oh. was a. This was not in the order. Not huh? right order, but it came up. So, stitch with the pro stitcher, or you can just stitch it out, but just a little bit different each time, like rotate it just a little bit or move it just to the side or a little bit. Or just stitch on top of it and it just makes it bolder and bolder, bolder and bolder. bolder. Yeah, so this One, was like a, 60, a, weight, a 50 weight thread and then just a fun, now this could be any design on here, but one thing too is this is, this is a white piece of fabric, the blue is just a raw edge strips and then Marie went around in what we call herky-jerky. <laughs> <laughs> and just stitch it I'm down. about quick. You know, you can do that herky-jerky really fast. And that's the nice fast. thing about a lot of these today <laughs> are there some really quick, quick ideas for gifts, for decorations. Yeah. Okay? Yep. yep. All right. Next, <clears throat> another something really fun. This what? is just, <laughs> I know, what is this? What you make? <laughs> <laughs> so this is just to become a bowl. All right? So here's a spiral design in the center, and then there's these little designs, and using the skew two on your quilting, on your pro stitcher, or free motion quilting, quilt it around this, and then take it to your domestic machine and stitch, zigzag right along there, and as you do that, it becomes a bowl, and then zigzag around the top of it, or surge, so it gives it that nice edge, and you have a bowl. But how fun is that? And you don't have to, you know, we talk about Pro Stitcher a lot, but you don't have to have a Pro Stitcher to put designs in, oh. create your own you know designs. You know groovy board? Oh. Spiral. The yeah. spiral on the groovy board would be great for that one. Yeah. So there you go. Great ideas. All right. Now, we talked at the beginning of this webinar about, about background fills. And so I'm going to show you some background fills. And this quilt right here, Oops, this quilt, it, this is a snowman, if you were to see the top of it. And so I kind of gave it a little bit of a ridge around here, kind of a different definition. And then it's all just free motion quilting. And all of this free motion quilting, kind of quilted it to death, as I say Marie does. You know, this is just straight lines, you know. Um, 
stippling. Lots kind of, of follow the pattern also. Mm -hmm. I can see you did that the here. Checked. The checked, yeah, yeah. and the, that's a really nice yeah, thing. Yeah, the fabric always gives you a little idea. Okay, and with this, I matched threads with the fabric, okay? So you see texture as we hold this up. You can see texture, but it doesn't say uh, the thread is screaming at you, okay? Again, let's bring in another one. This is a design from um, Nancy Halverson, Art to Heart to Art. Art art to heart <laughs> and so I just with the prints of the fabric this is how I got my quilting design so I just used the design of the fabric and created a background feel a background feel the same thing I used all of this and in this bottom one so it's really quilted densely but you can see where I, I added, I think I used two layers of batting on this, and it made this really pop. All that applique, so that snowman looks round. That light, you know, the ornament there added some buttons. But how cute is that, that it, that pops, but that's really fun because when it's hanging up, you know, up on a wall or something, you can see that texture, and it's great. I love texture and quilting. So that is... And can you tell that I have a lot of this fabric, backing <laughs> fabric? <laughs> Put on a few of them. Oh, okay, good for so Christmas. these sheep that need eyes. So again, that texture of the sheep, just a swirl and pebbles. And then every one of these, and there's seven sheep in this quilt. And every one of these, I used a different background. And these backgrounds are from Art and Stitch. And they come in, their, it's their, their fills, the Creative Fills design. And I brought it in, it comes in at about 16 inches square. Brought it in, I cropped away the, sh the sheep part and then let it fill in all of that. So each one of these sheep have a different background from those creative fills. So anytime you, you know, and it stitched out. It was so fun to watch oh, that stitch out. Cute. Okay, Thank so you. I think it's your turn okay. now because all of these I use the same <laughs> thread color. Okay. Okay. Well, this one is not the same thread color. All so right. you didn't do too much piecing on this, did you? Or not very much. The blue is the only piecing. And then this is just white thread, and this is kind of a gray thread. And rough applique, get that little snowman in there, and you just see the color and the quilting really shows. So on don't this. be afraid to add a little bit of thread color to your white to give it a different dimension. Yeah, a different make it look. show. Yep. Okay, all right, quickly here, I use, I do towels, okay? I, I found this out a few years ago and I thought, that's so fun, on my long arm. So I pin my, pin it to the long arm on both the take up bar and the backing bar and then um, your towel works best if it has the band on it and then I put two threads in and I just stitched this fun band. Just fun and so great. cute. Oh, yes. that'd be so fun in your bathroom. Yes, and, and every put room a, in the house is decorated. Yes, and put a red <laughs> towel with it. How fun is that? Okay. All right. I think I want to show this because I just love it. It's so cute. Look. Remember we talked about cheater panels. We talked about finding cheater panels. We got a quick call on that. Remember we talked about pre-printed fabrics? I found this cute one the other day at my local quilt shop ah. and it had all these different ones but I love this, love this green from, this is from uh, fabric from Fabric Quilt and I just cut out this and I actually trapuntoed so you can see how puffy that snowman is. I wanted the snowman to stand out and I did this on the Sweet 16, so on the sit-down machine, and just herky-jerkied around here and stitched that down. But the way I did it was I glued, I sprayed, spray glued these layers together. Then I took two layers of batting, a wool, and just a Hobbs 8020, and made the shape of that snowman, put it underneath it, stitched around, I actually stitched around this, made sure it was really square, and then stitched around the snowman. And then, you can see here, really close, I used the design of the fabric to do a grid or a crosshatch in it. Easy, and then just stitch, fun, fun, fun. It was just so easy oh, to man. do. So look how fun these are. 
look at this. Here you go. Here's the star. I recognize that. Yeah, it's the same pattern you used, but how fun for the little kids to just color this. And you can use sharpie markers or there's fabric markers. You can even color with crayons. Just have the little kids color those. So you can just have these sitting out. You could do these for uh, Christmas or a Christmas gift. For the school teacher. For, and you could have kids sign it. So you've just taken that same fabric that I had with my snowman, took the little squares off mm -hmm. it because there was extra, yep. Yep. and made, oh how cute. Yeah, so oh, there we that go. That was my teacher in high school, Mrs. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> well everybody had Mrs. Jones <laughs> and Mrs. Smith. <laughs> I don't think I had a Mrs. Jones. <laughs> oh, okay, so those are those are fun. Okay, one last thing is this is an oldie but easy. So this, this is when Marie started quilting. Now, don't don't be discouraged. <laughs> this is when Marie started quilting, and she didn't know how to I quite get the design on. Right? Why I wanted it to be good. So what I did was I took the golden threads paper. Well, let's see if we can. The golden threads paper. There's my design. This is. Yep. Did you draw that yourself? I did draw this myself, and then I but used. There's so many designs you can use. I know, from but I. You know. Even. And you put it on there, I and then put it what? on there, and I stitched right on the line. <laughs> so I right through it. Right on it. So you could do that with your sweet. You can do that with your long arm, and then just Tore pull off the, the paper, paper off. And yes. then you get the exact. Perfect. Wait a minute though. I have four corners I want to do. Okay, so what you can do. So I have to is, draw this four yep. times? You just layer it, stitch it with your sewing machine without thread, and then you can use your pounce chalk and just put that on your fabric and stitch on that. So here's how you get your design and you just trace it on there. So okay. I have my paper underneath there. Trace it out. Trace it on. Put it on. Quilt done. Stitch it. There you go. So I know one thing that I recommend with this is not to use a Sharpie marker, but to use a water-soluble marker because this can go into the fiber of the fabric. Right. So, but oh my gosh, how fun. What fun ideas. I, I, I want to go home and start making my Christmas gifts. All right, we want to go. Ready yes. to quilt. All, All right. right, thank you for joining us. And happy holidays. All, All of them. All of them. <laughs>